And the majority of improper handling comes from the workers in the kitchen. You might see a question that asks you about that. It might ask you about the consumer, which would be the customer. Your kids don't really handle the food very much, so they're not very likely to add too much to it, right, except their own plate. The manufacturer has got a lot of safeguards in their factories when they're putting together the chicken nuggets or whatever that we're using. So majority of foodborne illnesses are the result of improper handling by the worker. Okay. We deal with a lot of food that can be potentially hazardous. Milk and dairy products. Do you take your milk's little temperature when it comes in in the morning? Check the milk box when you get there in the morning. Do you leave your milk in the milk box overnight? Okay. Some schools are able to. They have reliable equipment. Other schools are not able to. Um, meat and fish, even though most of what we get is pre-cooked, it's still a factor. Eggs, even the ones that come in a carton. Baked potatoes are huge for foodborne illness. Rice and beans. There's your sliced melons. They have so much moisture in them, I guess, is why they're a problem. And we don't deal with them a whole lot. They probably see more of that in restaurants where they have salad bars than we do in our schools, but we still have to make sure that they're chilled properly, handled properly, kept cold, okay? Cut tomatoes, there's that acid factor, and again, moisture. You know how if you've got some cut tomatoes left over, even at home, if you don't use them real quickly, they kind of get slimy? Ugh, that's gross. And cut leafy greens, especially the kind that comes to you already cut. And I don't know why that is, but that's a, that's a huge factor for foodborne illness. So your temperature danger zone. If this is not something that's already stuck in your head, you're going to want to remember this. Our temperature danger zone is from 41 degrees to 135 degrees. So anything in between those two temperatures that's where your bacteria are going to start to multiply every 20 seconds, okay? Cold foods need to be kept at 41 degrees or below. If you've got tossed salad on your lunch line, how do you take a temperature of a tossed salad in an Ivex bowl? Yeah, I don't have an answer either. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to stuff a whole bunch of lettuce on your stem thermometer and make it take a temperature. <laughs> So what you've got to do with that is you've got to make sure that that lettuce is in your cooler. When you take it out and you put together your salads, you make sure that it gets put back in that cooler or back in that cool cabinet, your reach-in cabinet, quickly. Don't put a whole pan of 35 out on your serving line. I'm not sure that any of you have kids that eat a whole lot of salad unless it's got pickles on it, right? Use a half pan so that you're not leaving it sit out because even with your frost plate, it may not be cold on the top. So, um, canned fruits, be sure you're putting your canned fruits in the cooler the night before so that they're already cold when you start to handle them because the reach-ins are not gonna get those down cold enough to stay cold. I prefer to eat mine cold anyway. I don't like it straight out of the can. It's kind of gross. So. That's a good way to make sure you've got tomorrow's fruit, too, is to get it from the storeroom and put it in the cooler overnight, okay? 135 degrees is where your hot food needs to be. That's the lowest it can possibly go is 135 degrees. When you cook food, you cook it hotter than that. Your warming cabinet is set hotter than that, but you fan that door all the time. So it's not going to stay at that temperature as well. So make sure that when you're cooking and in between the lines that you've got food that's hotter than 135 degrees. Does everybody know how to use a thermometer? Oh good, I'm glad to hear that. I didn't hear a rousing yes though. <laughs> <laughs> make sure that you clean and sanitize it before you put it in the food. Does anybody still use the little cups 
of water and sanitizer and soapy water? Yes. Okay, good. One thing that the health inspector has told me lately is you don't want to leave the thermometer standing in the liquid. I know some of y'all have the little sleeve that the thermometer goes in taped on the pipe on your table. That's a great idea. Put the little sleeve on the table so you, use, you take your thermometer out, put it in your liquid, put it back in when you're done. So it's not sitting in that liquid. Um, make sure that you're putting the stem into the center and the thickest part, especially like your bone-in chicken, your fried chicken that you're using. Be sure that you don't have your thermometer up against the bone because it's going to read a different temperature. Okay? Make sure you've got a couple of hamburgers or a couple of chicken fried steaks stacked up on each other so that you're getting a good reading. And it's not a bad idea to stick it in a different part just to make sure that you've got a good temperature. Okay? Be sure and write it down. What happens if you don't write it down? It didn't happen. That's right. And then be sure you clean and sanitize the thermometer before you stick it in the next food. And I know if you're responsible for checking everything on your serving line and the kids are coming in a half a minute, you're running like a crazy woman. Are your logs close by so you don't have to go look for them? You turn around and write it down, you got a pencil handy? <coughs> okay, if not, that might be something that you want to nicely suggest to your manager. Can we tie a pencil on a string and hand it, hang it on the wall or something? Because if you have to go look at it, the likelihood of it getting done is slim to none, right? So, okay. All right, so true or false? A thermometer is not a luxury. It's a necessity to ensure food safety. Temperatures must be taken and recorded many times during the day. Very good. Does everybody know how to calibrate a thermometer to make sure that it's the right temperature? What temperature should it read in a glass of ice water? 32 degrees, that's right. We always calibrate our thermometers in ice water, so it's called the ice point method. You might want to remember that. Put enough ice in the glass so the water gets good and cold, but not so much that you can't get your thermometer down in the glass. Be sure and kind of shake it, let it sit for a little bit, give the water a chance to to get cold before you put your thermometer in there. If you don't have a set of pliers or something that you have available to make sure that the thermometer gets calibrated correctly, have your manager let us know because we've got pliers and stuff for you to use. Sometimes the little sleeves that has the little adjusted, they get worn out and the thermometer's still good. So we can get y'all some pliers if you need to. And be sure that your te their temperature reads 32 degrees. All right, cooking and holding temperatures. Everything that we have is already cooked meat-wise. We don't get any raw meat products anymore. Because of that, we have to cook everything to 165 degrees if it's meat. If you look in your cookbook, you're going to see all kinds of different temperatures for beef and pork and chicken. But those are all from raw product. It's a different thing when you have chicken fried steak that's already made up or a hamburger patty that's already made up. So be sure that you're cooking everything to at least 165 degrees for 15 seconds. Then it has to be held above 135. What happens if you cook broccoli to 165 degrees though? Yeah, nobody wants to eat it bad enough as it is without it being brown and mushy and yucky. So 140 is enough on your vegetables. Okay, it's above that 135 degrees. You've got it hot enough to make sure that you've killed the bacteria, but not so much where you've killed the quality and the nutrients out of your product, okay? So if you're the person that's responsible for cooking vegetables, that's something that you'll want to remember. And then again, of course, your cold foods need to be chilled first and held at 41 degrees or below. A lot of y'all may remember 4140 for the danger zone. Um, that's still way better than what they require now. But for the test, be sure and remember 135 and 41. Okay.